Uh, Dr. Z's Happiness Camp, the Happiness Campaign with Dr. Z here on eLifeMedia.net, powered by live music for you. Once again, studio hotline is 240-455-5934, 240-455-5934. It's a glorious night, beautiful, brilliant sunshine, bathed in <coughs> sunshine here in the nation's capital on a, th on a Wednesday night. It's uh, 7.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Here we are with Dr. Z, the Happiness Campaign, coming right to you right now. With God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. All the praise and gratitude belongs to the one, the almighty, the most high, who's created us all and sustains all life in his creation. And uh, we pray for peace upon the prophet who is worthy of praise. His name is Muhammad. And we pray for peace upon you, dear learner, who is tuned into our show. Welcome to the Happiness Campaign with Dr. Z. I am Dr. Z, greeting you in light, love, peace, and harmony. So the premise of this happiness campaign is that, you know, all of us, we want happiness, peace, and safety and security, but we don't always know how to do it. And what we figured out in the last 10 years is that we, if we will move ourselves out of our fear, and selfishness and move into spirit, love, mercy, and selfless service energies, then we have a better chance to be happy consistently. <coughs> and we wow. have a very special uh, guest, I want to say guest, a friend uh, with us tonight. And we've, before we introduce him, we've been talking about building a happy family. And in order for a happy a family to be happy, we have to have individuals that are in a peaceful state and so tonight you know we're going to talk about educate and elevate the original human nature and before I bring Imam Salim on I want to I want to make a statement of gratitude uh, he is the founder and director of the Muslim American Logic Institute and I am a student and I want to say thank you to him and to Molly and everybody involved because the education that I received there is just phenomenal. And it's elevated my life in all aspects from health, finances, relationship, business. And so I'm very grateful, grateful for that. Mali is an institution devoted to the study and preservation of Muslim American Quranic logic and teachings of Al-Islam in America. And in my opinion, it is the best of its kind. You know, the guidance of God is the only guidance. And Mali is dedicated to helping individuals comprehend and understand that language. And in that, in its original language, and in that, we grow our intelligence and grow our life. So it's a very important institution for transformation and thinking and behavior and achievement. And now I'd like to welcome my friend, a leader, a mentor, a teacher, uh, founder and director of Mali, Imam Salim Mutman, welcome to the Happiness Campaign. Assalamu alaikum. Wa well, <clears throat> alaikum assalam, and I want to thank you for having me on your program tonight. And we pray that uh, we be a benefit, and your radio listening audience will benefit from what we have to share with them tonight. Yes, I mean, amen. So. What we'd like to do just to get started here is um, kind of give us an idea, you know, for those who may not know you, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and then tell us about, you know, Mali, the Muslim American Logic Institute. What, what, what's all, what are you all about? Well, <clears throat> myself, <coughs> there's not a lot to say <coughs> and that I'm not a very outgoing, sociable person. But the Mali Institute, <coughs> we began maybe uh, in the 90s. We began with the name, and at first, we were just doing Dawa work, uh, writing pamphlets. We had a magazine that we were writing. And um, also, I have served as an imam at a couple of masters here in the Detroit area. Now, um, 
the magazine, uh, we had ideas about it to be a nice full color magazine, which we got to a certain level, and uh, it didn't make it. The magazine basically failed. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> um, in the process, since the early, well, I would say the mid 80s, since the mid 80s, I had been working on a plan to devise a method of teaching Quranic Arabic that would make it easy, easy for our people to understand and grasp. Because a lot of people, of course, have been ha having a problem with learning Quranic Arabic, not only a foreign language, but even in the method in which it was being taught. Mm -hmm. So I felt, you know, after studying at the, uh, with the teacher at the community college, he would show us things about the language where people was making it too difficult. So <clears throat> the first step is that when we talk about Quranic Arabic, you know, and you could stop me at any time if I if no, I'm going okay. on too it's, much. No, it's good. Go ahead, please. Uh, when we talk about learning Arabic, uh, you, you hear people say Arabia, Arabia. Uh, that that lets me know they're not that well familiar with Quranic Arabic, mm -hmm. because Arabia is not the word you would use to define Quranic Arabic. The word is Arabic or Arabi. Not Arabiya. Because in the, now let me explain, in the Muslim world where you, where you have predominantly Muslims who speak the language, there's what most of them will call a di di diglossia, meaning that there are two accepted uh, forms of, of Arabic language mm -hmm. that, that is used in the country. Okay. <clears throat> And one they will say is the spoken language <coughs> of the common people on the street. Mm -hmm. The other is what we may call modern standard Arabic. It's a higher form of Arabic that's spoken by the educated class. Let's say uh, the news reporters on TV, they will speak modern standard Arabic. They will not speak the broken um, more or less colloquial style Arabic okay. with, with the dialects. But I would say there's a triglossia. Triglossia meaning there are three kinds of Arabic that's, that you will find in the Arabic speaking countries. And the third is Quranic Arabic. Now Quranic Arabic is not a spoken, it's not a spoken language. It's a revealed language. A language of revelation. Okay. So you don't find people speaking Quranic Arabic, per se, on the streets. You may find amongst the Bedouin who speaks a high form of Arabic, but n n you won't find people who will say they speak Quranic Arabic. So that's the first thing we have to realize. Mm -hmm. That when we're talking about learning Quranic Arabic, we're not talking about learning a spoken language. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for somebody that's not familiar with the language, how would you define Quranic Arabic for, you know, the English-speaking person? What, what are yes. we really talking about? <clears throat> We're talking about language that has been revealed by God to the, to the messenger, Muhammad the prophet, the president, peace be upon him. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the Quran has its own worldview in terms of conceptual and contextual ideas. <coughs> it may take an eye view, a view, let's say that was in the social world, and it may take the words from that social society, but when it comes into the Quranic worldview, these words will take a shift in terms of their contextual and conceptual ideas that they will give. It takes a shift, even though it appears to be the same word. For example, yes. It happens the other way. For example, you take the word hijab. Many American people are familiar with the word hijab. They're familiar with the word uh, 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 um, for um, 
uh, what's the word? Uh, search for the word now. I was thinking uh, jihad. Jihad, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, jihad, hijab. These are common words. But when when the social, in the social con- context and concept of this word hijab, it's not the same as the Quranic context and conception of the word jihad, uh, hijab. Okay. So, though, <coughs> both words appear in both constructs, the social and the Quranic. So this is an example mm-hmm. of what we mean by Quranic language. So what Mali does, what I, the first thing I had to do is understand this. So that when I devise this method and this class, it has to be restricted to Quranic Arabic only. And that will cut down on a lot of the problems that we have. Because most teachers in this country, they, and, and most people will, 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 will think that you have to learn to speak before you can learn to read. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, mm-hmm. so the methods would be to teach you to speak first. Thinking that if you can speak Arabic, you can read Arabic. That's not but true. <laughs> we do have people who can speak, but they can't read. Right. We call them illiterate mm. or unlettered. Mm. But we don't have a common word for those who can read with comprehension, but can't speak. That's strange. Yes. Very odd. Yes. So, here we have a situation now where you can read Quranic Arabic, comprehend what is being said, but you can't articulate it on your tongue. Okay, so... This is, this is, the, this is the idea. So, all of that's going inside. Yes. And it's operating in your mind, in your feeling world, in your soul. Yes. But you can't... Speak it, articulate it <coughs> that on way. your tongue. Right. Okay. <coughs> you can't. It's, it's not on the tongue. So, 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 so why is that so important? Why, why is that important for a human being? I mean, whether I mean, I took a class some years ago. It was an Arabic class, and there were people that weren't Muslims, and there were people that were Muslims in there. Right. Yes. Why? Why is what we're talking about so important, regardless of what you call yourself? but especially for people who profess a certain way of life. Why is the Quranic Arabic understanding so important? Because man, man, in his search for universal realities. Now, everyone may not find it important. Okay. Because everyone may not have a sense of wanting to know. They may live a life of pleasure, they go to work, they have an income, they have their weekend pleasures, that's enough for their life, that's enough for them. Mm-hmm. That type of person. But okay. you have another person who may have a curiosity. We all have a born with curiosity, but, but a person whose curiosity may begin to drive, drive him or her to wanting to know, wanting to understand, mm-hmm. wanting to comprehend, <coughs> let's say, <coughs> this universe <coughs> this society <coughs> thing <Okay>. so <coughs> a man's search for uh, for wanting to know wanting to see revealed language revealed language will assist him okay yes yes because we need assistance and we need guidance as human beings I mean all of us yes right we can't necessarily assist ourselves we can't guide ourselves but this revealed word this guidance does support the life because I mean God created us so he knows the best way for us to live yes yes and so yes yes also God has created he created this material world and in everything that he has created possesses volumes of knowledge that man finds that he can codify the language that he gets from creation, which also is guiding him. Yes. Okay. And advance mankind in terms of into civilizations. Yet, 
man can he can fail, he can go astray, he <coughs> so God will come and help him. <coughs> he will help this man. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so now you have a created a created tax that's not extracted from the philosopher from the philosopher who studied the material world. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He studies the material world as a result, God, the same one who put the knowledge in the material world, is going to now help him and reveal to him that which you don't get through empirical studies, you could say. Yes, yes, yes. Let me, uh, let me uh, thank the Facebook, uh, Facebook Live friends that are joining in. Thank you all for joining. So... <clears throat> In thinking about what you what you're just talking about and the fact that we need guidance, I know we're going to talk about the conference, some details of it. But you have a you have a, uh, a annual conference. I think this is the ninth annual conference coming up in uh, Philadelphia, May 19 through the 21st. Right? Yes. Okay. And you have a theme: educate and elevate the original human nature. Now it looks like yes. we got a, we, it. Looks like we got a caller on the line. Uh, hello, caller. Did you have a question? Hello. Okay. So let's let's go back, Imam Salim. <coughs> this 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 <coughs> this original nature. Yes. What are, what are, what are we talking about here? Uh, this is a major theme that you will find in Islam and in Christianity for sure. This major theme of this original created nature that we're all born in. Christians would agree with this and the Muslim. And we have two, if you, if you uh, <clears throat> take a look at both religions, we have two major holidays. Actually, we only have two holidays. Christians have Christmas, and they have Easter. Mm -hmm. Those are the two holidays, holy, holy days we find in Christianity. And we have, the Muslims have the two Eids. The Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha as yes. two holidays. Yes. Those are the only two holidays that we have traditionally. These two holidays, the theme, the universal theme that's expressed in these two holidays is the or this rejuvenation of this original nature that we're all born in, <clears throat> that God has created us in. Mm -hmm. <coughs> in fact, man, the creation, and the religion are all based upon this common nature. You'll find common in all three. So the idea is to find harmony in man, the creation, and in religion. Okay. But in order to do that, we have to return to our origin. We want to return to our origin. And this you will find in the traditional, um, you will say the traditional uh, rituals of, of Ramadan, and of Christmas to return to this original nature. That's what Christmas is about, the re rejuvenation, you could say, the rebirth mm -hmm. okay. of okay. this nature. Then this nature can be, has to ascend through education or elevation is another word for ascension mm -hmm. or resurrection is another word for ascension. This nature ascends in the human being. And there you will find the, the, the universal idea of Easter is surrounded around the ascension. Uh -huh. Whereas in the, in the uh, Eid al-Adha or the Hajj, the principle of the Hajj, its ascension is the Mount Arafat. Yes. Because in our religion is the prophet who I said, the president of peace be upon him, that you have not performed the pilgrimage. <clears throat> now, if you miss Mount Arafat, you have missed the you have missed the pilgrimage. So the pilgrimage proper is based upon 
you making the ascension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is in the ritual. But the universal reality of this is the ascension of the original nature. So you find both principles in both religions somewhat clothed with, with rituals, mm -hmm. artifacts, objects to express this idea. Okay, so then could we say then that, okay, the child is born, and that yes. original nature is intact, right? Yes. And I always say, you know, they're happy. We should be happy like children are. <coughs> yes. Okay, and peaceful like they are. <coughs> yes. But then the social and cultural conditioning from parents, from schools, from media, all throughout the life, takes them out of that nature. And yes. we have these symbols to help us because our soul is yearning to get back to that nature. Yes. And we have to have some way to do that that's not corrupted by, you know, social and cultural values. Yes. So so in essence then this theme for your conference is this is what really what you what you what we're trying to do, right? Yes. Okay. With with the use of they're going to add. So there's two ideas here. <clears throat> now, this nature, this original nature comes <clears throat> intact with it. Two, two principles. One is that it has in it the obedience, which in, in our language we would say taqwa. Yes. It has, it has the obedience. Right? I'm going to use the word obedience. <coughs> <coughs> the other <coughs> principle is the principle of uh, the potential to be enlightened. Mm -hmm. This is in the child. Mm -hmm. The child comes in the world, n not a sinful child. The child comes in the world and obedient, being obedient to its nature, to its creator. So it has this. Okay, yes. And, and it also has the potential for enlightenment. As the child, so we believe, in America now, we believe that all children, all children can be educated. Yes, yes. We believe that all children must be educated. What we're saying is that all children have the nature to ascend to, to greater heights intellectually, morally speaking, yes. spiritually speaking. So, therefore, someone is at a point in time in this country is saying that you must put your child in the educational system by the age of five. That's right. In order, in order for us to say that, we have to provide some form of public education so that every child Every child has the opportunity in America to be educated. Right. right. Okay? Now, as the child or the person is evolving in its, in its enlightened part of its nature, it has to keep the balance of the obedience, the taqwa, with it. Mm. <coughs> You, we can find in history a man <coughs> where he has advanced. He's well advanced in his technologies, in his industries, industrial, industrial, in, empirical uh, knowledge and yeah. studies and advancements. But at the same time, he seems to be short, come up short when it comes to being conscious of what God wants of him and, ob and obeying that consciousness, mm. he falls short. So imbalance. So there's an imbalance. And then that makes us unhappy. <laughs> uh, yes, somebody's going to be unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and I'm sure we have experienced this in, in our history. So uh, that's very important. The other important uh, idea that I want to express is that because we're looking for this enlightenment to be applicable in our everyday life, I believe that, and I would say that the Quran has to be 
a study first as a science itself. Just as the creation is studied as a science. You have the many sciences that goes into studying the created world and man. Mm -hmm. that, but, and also, its approach has to be the approach of a scientist who's studying the Quran itself as a science. Then we begin to look at it in terms of the rituals that's extracted from it that will help us remember. Okay. <coughs> it's a whole system. It's a whole system that needs to be uh, assimilated, internalized. The whole and, in, system. and in fact, we see in history that those who, the original ones who were studying the Quran, they, they were responsible for the sciences that emerged in, throughout yes. the Dark Ages, if I, if I have it correct, my history correct. Yes. Yes. And so now we're, we're at a time with the problems that we see in the world where there needs to be a resurgence or a renewal back to this original nature. Because, you know, when we're outside of that, our life doesn't work too well. It's kind of like the principle of integrity. You know, we've been created a certain way. <clears throat> and when we're in integrity with the guidance of God, our life seems to work better. Let, let, me, let me ask you about the, the conference. Let, let's, you know, we, you've got the conference coming up. Yes. And these concepts that you're talking about, again, are part of the theme for the, yes. For the conference. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so what I have here today is <coughs> uh, uh, May 19th to 21st <coughs> yes. at uh, Mass Digital Law in Philadelphia, how, how can people uh, learn more about the conference and, and, and sign up for the conference? Because, you know, it's, it's going to be wonderful. I've been to eight of them, seven, yes. seven and this will be number nine. And everyone is, gets better and better and better. How, how can people plug in? If they go to MuslimAmericanLogic.org, <clears throat> that's our website, Muslim American Logic, all one word, dot org, O R G. There they can find a tab to click on that will take them to Eventbrite. And they can, um, there they can register and they will also get information about the conference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, our conference is a three day conference. For the three days, there is a $100 fee. And, uh, and that includes vending. If you want to vend, if you're a vendor and you like to vend, the registration covers everything. On Friday, on Saturday, there will be a lunch, and you, we also have an awards banquet on Saturday, and that's included within the $100. Okay. Friday, Friday evening, we also have, we will have a jazz uh, a night with the jazz group, and that uh, that admittance, the hundred dollars covers the admittance. <clears throat> and then uh, we have workshops by various scholarly individuals uh, throughout the community of those who identify with the leadership of Imam W. D. Muhammad. <clears throat> they will be making presentations. We have Mali students in within this group. Who will also be making presentations and workshops. Uh, we will talk a little later about Mali itself mm -hmm. and the advancement of the students. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they will be making workshops. And then Saturday night, we have a very special uh, feature with Nimat. N A M N I M A T. Nimat. Nimat is a singer. And she, for the first time now, we have, we, Molly has, I would say, produced a student who can go in the Quran and look at the Arabic text of a verse. And, <coughs> and as a musician, which I'm sure she can explain it much better than I can, which she will do at the conference, God willing, she can extracts because the Quran has in it a rhythm. When you read the Quran, there's a rhythm that's there and the Quran rhymes all the way through. Though the Quran is not a song, 
and it's not poetry. But the one who writes the songs can go in and listen to the rhythms, the long sounds, the hard sounds, the soft sounds, the short sounds, just by without creating any rhythm to it, just listening to the sounds, long, short, hard, soft. And being a musician, by listening to the songs, <coughs> they will be able to grab a rhythm mm -hmm. <coughs> from the verse. I listen to the verse. So this is what, what the first thing they do is grab a rhythm from the verse. Of course, it's not going to sound exactly like the verse because the artist doesn't just copy it. It, 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 it you could say it, in a sense, it reveals itself to the artist. Right, right. Then the artist takes the words and she writes a translation or what we call a reflection of the verse. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> from that reflection she sees the logic and the, and the theme or what have you of the verse itself now and this comes with apprehension right right now what she mm -hmm. does in her commentary of the verse she writes it in the song as it applies to the life narrative of the African American Wow. In her own environment. Wow. <laughs> so all that you've been talking about is being translated into this song, this music. Yes. To touch our soul and heart and intellect to help us to grow. Yes. Yes. I, I see it very clearly. To reach many. It's a new, for us, this is going to be a new phenomenon for writing music. Because the Quran and itself is something that's new to the African American. Mm -hmm. Period. Yes. Yes. In Muslim Namas. Yes. But the right from it is going to be new, and I believe it's going to put her on the cutting edge of writing songs, <clears throat> because the logic of the verse is contained in the song. Yes. Yes. And so, that's where the guidance is in the logic, right? Yes. It yes, becomes very revealing. Wow. This is amazing. Um, and I know we had Nimat on a few weeks ago, for those you may have heard, and her website is nimat.net, nimat.net. Now, we're kind of running out of time. We still have a few minutes left, but I want to also uh, find out you've got some other things, you, you know, going on with students as well as your project in Ghana. So uh, whichever way you'd like to go with this conversation, I got a people, a couple of people on uh, Facebook Live. I want to thank you all. I won't mention your names. Thank you for sharing the uh, the video. Um, but one person says in here the concept about remaking the world, right? Yes. I mean that's what I'm seeing with 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 what Nimat is doing and with what some of your other students. Or at least let's put it this way: what folks are comprehending from the guidance, and then you put that into the gift that God has given you. And then express <coughs> express it out <coughs> to serve. Yes. <clears throat> is that is that yeah. a good way to, to put it? Yeah, so let's let's look at it like this with the class. What we're doing with the class, we're taking this saying, remake the world. It comes from Imam W. D. Muhammad. Yes. Okay? Yes. Now so here here's the process. We learn the first process in Mali, we learn to read the Quran for ourselves first. You read it grammatically correct <clears throat> with understanding its context, its concepts within the Quranic worldview without going outside, going thousands of years ago, trying to fit, we read within its own context. Then we're going to look at where the students are at now, the advanced students. We study the speeches of Imam W.D. Muhammad in, terms of in, in their uh, uh, written form. We study the teachings and we, we see the logic mm -hmm. yes. of how he's expressing the Quran, right? Yes. And it's, yes. it's not the same as you're going to find throughout the Muslim world, okay, so, yes. or the world, the world period. Now, in order for us to communicate first with other Muslims in the world, which, for example, in Ghana, Africa, we take the logic 
and we have to we have to express it back through the Quran to the other people in order that they can understand what we're saying. Yes. But it's not enough to say W. D. Muhammad said it. No, it's take the logic, understand the logic from the Quran, mm -hmm. now express it back through the Quran, and you don't have to say W. D. Muhammad said it, you don't have to say the Quran said it, they will get it. And it will be an advancement for them in their thinking. Yes. This is a <clears throat> this is a, a literal process in beginning to first remake our own world and then beginning to share with others and that we could begin to advance this world of thinking uh, throughout, throughout the whole world and have an influence of, of thinking throughout the whole world. This, this, I believe, we're on the threshold of doing. Yes. Oh, praise to God, Allah, the most merciful, the knower of everything. So, <clears throat> yes. So, <clears throat> we've got about five minutes or so. Um, would you like to tell us about... Oh, this is what I wanted to say. So, the idea about the logic, right? <clears throat> Once yes. you get the logic, which is kind of like... I would think of it as the underlining foundation. Yes. Then take a topic like marriage or business or whatever. Can't you use that logic in different contexts? I mean, isn't it transferable as a, as a logic, as a foundation? Yes. Sure. Let's take, for example, uh, <clears throat> uh, let's take <clears throat> Nemet's song, for example. Okay. <coughs> in her song... <coughs> now this is how I I am um, <coughs> going to express it from my observation of it. In her song, she's taking a verse, and we hear this verse all the time that the men are the maintainers, protectors, and maintainers of the women. Yes, that's how we hear that. That's a translation. Mm -hmm. But when you take Namet's translation of it, she's saying that this Rajuli Kawami which we're saying that the men are the maintainers. She's saying that this man is an upright man mm. over women. That he's an upright, morally, intellectually, financial, established man. Yes. Understand? Yeah, he's got to be a leader, an example. Of yes. The, of the best, of the best okay. in all aspects, yes. This is what a woman is looking for. But if you want this kind of man, then you're going to have to be a solid hot, a righteous woman. Yes. Hard and tact, who is obedient. Yes. Who is, who, who is obedient to this man, which most women would say, I don't, I don't want to be obedient to a man. I'm going to be obedient to God. But her song said, no, you, you have to be obedient. You have to protect him in his interests. Even when he's, even when he's absent from you. Now, to do that, you have to protect this man before you meet him. Meaning that you can reveal too much of yourself mm -hmm. before you meet this, if you want this kind of man. Because this man doesn't want a woman who reveals so much of herself that he, she has already, she has already exposed his secrets mm -hmm. <laughs> before you right. have. It. You understand? Right. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> now, this is in the song now. That's in marriage life. Let's take this to the business world. Isn't that the same for the employer? Absolutely. He wants to employ you. He wants, but before he employs you, he's saying he is upright. He's a decent, upright employer, established financially, so much so that he can pay you enough money for you who don't have what he has, right? Because yes. some men, as you take him from the verse, Allah has 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 uh he has uh, uh he has given some more than others yes yes so she's saying that this saying that Allah has given some men more than others but this man you can't just find every day that's right that's right so you can't find every day a man who can em employ another man and that he can provide for his family right right so right, if right. you find an employer like this if you're looking for an employer like this 
He wants to know, can you be trusted? Can you maintain the secrets of the company? Mm -hmm. Will you not mm -hmm. give away all of our secrets? Mm -hmm. Are you obedient? Mm -hmm. Right? These, these mm -hmm. are the things he wants to know. Okay. See, now we, we're putting it into another, another gym. Yeah, but I see, how, I see how the logic applies, right, in both yes. kind of contexts. So we, we got a couple of minutes left. You want to uh, tell us about your project uh, or how, how can we – I'm encouraging everybody to sign up to come to the conference. And this is a, a nonprofit organization. Mali is nonprofit, right? Yes. Okay. And I encourage us, if you like what you heard, to, 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 do, to donate. Uh, how can we donate? And, and would you like to say anything about the project in Ghana? We've got a couple of minutes left, Iman. I think what we we're doing in Ghana, uh, to talk a lot about it will take time, yeah. is that We'll help building a school in Ghana. It's in a <coughs> small town <coughs> in the suburbs of, <coughs> of Accra. Well, it's a village. Mm -hmm. It's a village where many of the people, they live uh, quite substandard to our way of life. Mm -hmm. And we're helping them build a school there. And uh, this is our first project that we'll be working with them. I have, uh, through marriage, I've become a member of the Bisa tribe, in which I'm also recognized as a progressive chief amongst the Bisa. So this is one of our projects that we have started here, and so far, Mali, the Mali students have been the major contributors to the school. Yes, yes. And you got students uh, all over the country. Yes. Yes. So this is a start, you know, this may take another time, a start for us to introduce in Ghana. A educational, a educational philosophy mm -hmm. in terms of seeing the Quran being taught within the curriculum as a science. Mm -hmm. Because in Ghana, you have many tribes, and the tribes bring their own traditions into the religion. And each tribe respects the other tribe, even though you don't frown upon their traditions, it's just that they're just different. Yes. <clears throat> so therefore, to introduce the Quran an idea that I'm presenting to them, it should be taught in the school as a science, not as a ritual book, not as a religious book, mm -hmm. as a science. Yes. Yes. And on the weekends, you have they have madrasa. They have the madrasa on the weekend. On the weekend, each tribe can teach their own tradition uh, from the book. Yes. That way, you're not interfering. Yes. Well, congratulations <clears throat> on, on all of these things. We thank Allah for you and thank all of, thank Mali, Thank a lot for Mali. We got to wrap up here. I think we need a couple of hours, Imam Salim. To I got more questions and things, but uh, yes, it's going to take really the time. Was short. Yes. So, uh, is there any last words you'd like to leave with the people? Uh, contact information, uh, anything that you'd like to. Say? Yes. If if <clears throat> if anyone wants to get into the Mali classes, <clears throat> you can go to uh, MuslimAmericanLogic.org, and there's a place to sign up. Or you can call me at 248-506-0780, and I can show you how to get into the classes. Yes. Well, I, I want to thank you uh, so very much, uh, brother and friend and mentor. We thank you for, so much for being on the show. And um, I think all of us should go back and, and listen and watch and really pay attention because there are a lot of gems that were, uh, that were shared. So yes. um, we, uh, we appreciate it, and, uh, you know, God continue to bless you. Um, bless Mali and bless all of us to grow and become our best selves through obeying the guidance of God. Thank you very much, Imam Salim Mutman, with Mali, and uh, we close out with our normal prayer. Our God and evolver and sustainer. Please accept this from us, for surely you are the hearer, the one who listens, and you are the knower of all things. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Assalamu